Hello, hello to everyone. Very thankful for this beautiful day that the Lord has given us today. Another day to express our thankfulness to the Creator for giving us our physical lives upon this planet Earth. And my hope is that each of us who are here today has a desire that you have that desire to express thankfulness to the Creator, that you have a desire to express gratitude toward God because the sacrifices of gratitude and thankfulness to God are never, never out of date. And this is a beautiful day, and as you enjoy this beautiful, wonderful day of life, please take this into consideration. In the 100th Psalm, verse number 4, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful and bless his name. That is Psalm 100, verse number 4. So what we have here is a call to be thankful to God. A call to be thankful to God. As the incense of the temple filled the whole house with smoke, at the time of the psalmist, the rendering of thanks and gratitude toward God should fill our lives from day to day. As long as we're partakers of the Lord's mercy, and I'm very thankful that we do have a merciful God. Aren't you thankful for that? That we have a merciful God, a merciful Savior. We are to give our thanks unto Him because He is the God of mercy. And this applies not only to the Old Testament temple of worship, but it extends to the faithful in all places where God is to be worshipped. And the Bible also says this in Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 15, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So again, we see this call to be thankful to God. Are you thankful to God today? We need to be thankful to God. We all have so much to be thankful for. Have you considered God today? The giver of life. The sustainer of life. The one who is all sufficient and has life within himself. The one whose grace is sufficient. Have you considered him today? Are you thankful to God? God is the one who provides you air to breathe. God is the one who provides you food to eat, shelter over your head, shoes to wear. God is the one who has given you the ability to think and to reason and to walk around Greenville, South Carolina today. We need to be thankful to God for that. God is the one who gives people opportunities to learn and to increase in knowledge and wisdom but sadly there are many people today who simply refuse to acknowledge God they refuse to acknowledge the triune God of the Bible for all that he has done for us and there are many people today who are simply not thankful they are not thankful to God as Psalm 100 verse 4 says be thankful unto God and bless his name so in their denial of God, they live selfish lives of unthankfulness. Lord, let, let that not be us. Let that not be us. Living lives of unthankfulness and ingratitude. Having a lack of godly character. And it's this same attitude of unthankfulness and ingratitude and having a lack of godly character that the prophet Isaiah comes against in chapter 1 when he speaks to those who vainly performed sacrifices that were a foreshadowing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says these words in verse number 18 of chapter 1. He says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's Isaiah chapter 1 and verse number 18. So in the immediate context here, we see God using his prophet to bring a charge to Israel for their unthankfulness 
and their ingratitude. It was a call to repentance. It was a call to repentance to, who, to those who no doubt considered themselves to be good people. No doubt they considered themselves to be good people. I'd venture to say that many folks walking around here today probably consider themselves to be good people. And these people here in Isaiah chapter 1, because they had professed a relationship with God, they considered themselves to be good people. But they were blind to their true moral condition. They were blind to the reality of their state before God. And this is not merely a command that is confined to the Old Testament because man's elevation of his own character is still taking place today. It's still taking place today in 2024, despite the fact that the Bible teaches that no man has righteousness or goodness in and of himself. I want to say that again. The Bible teaches very clearly that no man, no woman, no boy, no girl has righteousness in and of themselves. The only person who ever walked upon this planet earth who had righteousness in and of himself is Jesus Christ. He's the only one. Nobody else. Not you, not me, none of us. Only Christ had righteousness and has righteousness in and of himself. There's not a just person, in fact, upon the earth who does good and sins not. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need the Lord Jesus. Thankfully, a Savior has come in Jesus Christ. Every individual alive today has a great, great need. And that need is to have their sins forgiven and washed in the blood of the Lamb. That is the greatest need of any man, woman, boy, girl, to have their sins washed in the blood of the Lamb. So God's call is to come now and let us reason together. Isaiah 118, come now and let us reason together. We cannot reform ourselves. We cannot raise ourselves to spiritual life. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot cause ourselves to be born again. We need Jesus Christ for this. We need Jesus Christ to do a work inside and to give us a new heart. We cannot grant repentance to ourselves. We cannot grant faith, saving faith, to ourselves. We need the grace and the forgiveness that is found in none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. We need the Lord Jesus Christ to pardon us and to pronounce us righteous because all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. They'll never, they'll never do the trick, so to speak. We need the righteousness of Christ. So my dear friends, it doesn't matter today if you claim to know God or if you profess unbelief or if you profess to be of some other worldview perspective. Those who trust in themselves or labor to elevate or bolster themselves in spite of their blindness to their own spiritual state, they need Christ. They need to be saved. They need to come to the Lord Jesus in faith and repentance. They need a power that does not originate from within. They need the grace of God to transform them and to meet the demands of the holiness of God. And this grace is found in Jesus Christ alone and the finished work of the cross of Calvary. For a man or a woman to believe that they could save themselves somehow apart from the Lord Jesus Christ only serves as evidence of the nature of their moral condition before God. It illustrates their refusal to recognize the truth about their condition. They lack the ability within themselves, within that human nature, to save themselves. We need Christ for that. If you're here today and you are unregenerate, you've never been born again, you need Christ. You need Christ. We all need Christ. I need Christ. You need Christ. We all need Christ. Even if you're saved, even if you've been born again, you still need Christ. You don't stop needing Him. 
We need the forgiveness and the pardon that's found only in his name. Only Christ can lift the burden of sin. Only Christ can make a new creature. Only Christ can give you joy within. Only Christ is the source of any true and lasting peace and true and lasting comfort. We need him. In Matthew's gospel, sir, God bless you. Matthew's gospel, chapter 11, verse number 28. Again, we see a call to come to God. We see the call to come to God in the person of God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's rest available. This is good news today, friends. This is good news. There's rest available for you, but it's found in Christ alone. And that phrase, come unto me, implies that one needs to believe in Christ, follow Christ, and to be a disciple of Christ. When we come to him, we find all things that are relating to peace. We find all things that are relating to comfort. And we find all things that relate to the grace of God. We find this in Christ. We find all things that relate to salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not just calling people to come to church. Although that's a wonderful thing to do. If you have a good Bible-believing church, you ought to be faithful to the Bible-believing church. And if you don't, you need to be actively seeking one. But that's not the... That's not the entire context here. He's not calling us to go and hear the preacher preach. He's not saying to come and be baptized. He's not saying to come and perform some physical act or some ritual. But the coming to Christ that is being referred to here is an act of the grace of God. And it refers to a soul coming to Christ in an expression of grace and an expression of love toward Him and a desire for Him and having a faith, a hope, and a belief in Him alone. Those who come to Christ as sinners, they're going to find forgiveness in a willing Savior. Christ is a willing Savior. I'm very glad to proclaim that to you today. Christ is a willing Savior. Christ is an able Savior. He's not a weak Savior. He's a strong, He's mighty to save. Jesus Christ is mighty to save. He's a mighty Savior. All hell, all hell the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown Him Lord of all. He's an able Savior. He's a mighty Savior. He stands ready today to grant relief and forgiveness and pardon. And He stands ready today to give eternal life to whosoever would come to Him in faith and repentance. He says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Maybe you're walking by today and you've spent a lifetime laboring in the service of sin and carrying the burden and the guilt of the sin upon your conscience. Maybe you're weary of upholding human traditions and you seek peace and you seek rest for your weary soul. Friends, forgiveness is not found in human tradition. Salvation is not found in human tradition. Christ says, come unto me. Lay your burdens at my feet. Lay hold on eternal life by faith. Take hold of the righteousness which will never be attained by some work of the law. And then he says, when you come unto me, I will give you rest. And the rest that Christ speaks of is a peace of mind, a peace of conscience, it's a peace of the soul. This is talking about a true, genuine, lasting peace. And it all comes by divine grace. It does not originate from within yourself. It all comes by the pardoning and the saving grace of God and justification by the righteousness of Christ, by the full atonement of sin, by His sacrificial death on the cross of Calvary, 
and his rising again on the third day his rising again on the third day Christ can give you eternal rest and eternal communion with the triune God of the Bible Father Son and Spirit why should the burdened sinner seek rest elsewhere all we stand in need of is found in Christ and him alone he says come unto me for pardon from sin come unto me for freedom from bondage and victory victory over over the world the flesh and the devil it's all found in Christ and many people today draw near to him but only with their lips and their hearts remain far from him don't be one of those people don't be one of those people my dear friend to the poor lost ruined sinner who is burdened under the weight of sin who is aware of your transgression and you seek deliverance from the wretched state that you abide in their salvation found in Christ and him alone trust in him look to Christ Christ says repent and believe the gospel Jesus says verily verily I say unto you he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life the Apostle Paul wrote about him in Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20 when he said for I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me Jesus Christ said I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God we've all violated God's righteous holy standard his perfect standard and we stand in need of a Savior and that Savior has come lived a perfect sinless life from cradle to grave born of a virgin truly God truly man went to the old rugged cross died there Christian people are the only people in this world who have a finished work the Jehovah's Witnesses are still trying to work it out the Mormons are still trying to work it out the Roman Catholics and the Muslims are still trying to work it out Christ said it is finished my dear friend and that atoning price was paid once and for all time Christ paid the price he paid the debt for my mountain of sin and for your mountain of sin if you'll come to him in faith and repentance today and that price will never need to be paid again he paid it once and for all he died on the cross once and for all and he rose again on that third and appointed day for our justification for if Christ be not risen our faith is in vain this preaching is in vain and we'd all still be yet in our sins but thanks be unto a holy God up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes he arose a victor from the dark domain he lives forever with his saints to reign he arose he arose hallelujah Christ arose and it's him we proclaim today look to Christ and live repent believe the gospel for Christ is a perfect Savior. Christ is a perfect Savior.